This video is part 2 of the tutorial on moment of a 3D force about a point. What I am going to cover today is a shorter version of the previous method that I covered in part 1. What do I mean by shorter version? It means that we are not going to draw sketches of 2D views. Instead, we are going to rely on our ability to visualize the three dimensional aspects and determine moment of the force components about the coordinate axis. Since there are no sketches involved, we can call this method as purely a scalar method of finding moment. So, let us get started. We have to find moment of a force acting at point B due to the cable tension and the moment is required to be found about point A. The magnitude of the force acting at point B would be 2.5 kilo newtons acting in a direction from B to C. So, first and foremost we have to determine the components of the force T. You can see here in this diagram that T x, T y and T z are the components and we shall be determining moment of all the three components of the force about point A. First we write the force T in vector form and that is given here which is the magnitude of the force T. It is 2.5 kilo newtons and this is the unit vector along V C. I am sure you are conversant with finding the unit vector along B C and that is going to be the position vector B C divided by its magnitude. So, this is the force in vector form acting at B and now we have to determine the magnitude of the components. The component T x would be the I coefficient and that you can see that it is 2.5 times 6 divided by 7.6 and it is negative. So, it will work out to minus 1.97 kilo newtons and similarly we find out the j and k coefficients which would give us T y and T z components. Note that T x and T z are negative forces. That means, we have to show their direction in minus z and minus x direction in our diagram. Showing the correct direction of the components is extremely important as we are going to visualize the rotational aspects of these components about certain axis. So, first we are going to determine moment about the x axis. Let us call it m x and that is going to be 0. Why? Because the component T x is on the x axis itself. So, its moment about x axis would be 0 and the components T y and T z intersect the x axis. So, moment about the x axis of these two components would also be 0. So, moment of all the three components or in other words the moment of the force T about x axis is going to be 0 and therefore, m x is equal to 0. Let us make a note of this. Moment is 0 because T x is parallel to x axis and T y and T z components intersect the x axis. Next, we look at the moment of all the three components about the y axis. The component T y is parallel to y axis, so it contributes zero moment about y axis. T x intersects the y axis and therefore, has zero moment. Only the component T z will have moment about the y axis 
and that will be counterclockwise as seen from the top. The positive moment would be in this direction and this conforms to the right hand rule. If you curl your fingers of your right palm in this direction, the extended thumb would point towards the positive y direction. So, the rotation in this direction is going to be positive and Tz will cause rotation in this direction, therefore it will be positive and the moment arm for Tz would be this distance which is 6 meters. So, My is going to be Tz times 6 and Tz is 1.316 kilo newtons, therefore My would work out to 7.89 kilo newton meters. Note that when I plug in the value of Tz, I ignore the minus sign and I have already taken care of by showing its right direction in the diagram and I am visually finding out direction of the moment. Therefore, I need not consider the negative sign of Tz. I visualize the direction of the moment and since it is coming out to be positive, I have put in the positive sign here. This is an important aspect. Let us write down the comments here. Moment is 0 because T y is parallel to y axis and T x intersects y axis. So, these are the reasons that T y and T x components do not contribute to the moment. Only the component T z contributes to moment about the y axis. Next, we are going to compute the moment about z axis. As you might have guessed, the component T z is parallel to z axis. This is the positive z axis. So, T z being parallel to z axis has no moment about this axis. T x intersects the z axis and therefore, does not contribute to the moment. It is only the component T y which has counterclockwise moment and therefore, it will be positive and the moment arm for T y would again be 6 meters. As you can realize that rotation in this direction is going to be positive and this conforms to the right hand rule that is you curl your fingers of the right palm in this direction, your extended thumb will point toward positive z axis and the component T y is going to cause rotation in this direction. Therefore, its moment is going to be anti-clockwise and therefore be positive. So, T y times 6 is the moment about z axis and we plug in the value of T y and the moment m z works out to 4.74 kilo Newton meter. Here again we write down the comments that the moment is 0 because T z is parallel to z axis. and T x intersects z axis. So, the total moment about point A would be some of these moments. So, we can write that m about point A is 7.89 j, this value which is m y plus 4.74 k kilo Newton meter and that is the answer. So, you can see that we have been able to compute the moment of the force without drawing any sketches of 2 D views as seen along the x, y and z axis and therefore, this is a shorter version called a scalar method.
some of you might find it hard to visualize direction of the moment components and if that is the case i would recommend you to go back to part 1 the geometric method watch the video and practice few problems and i am 100% sure that your skill to visualize three dimensional aspects would improve multifold so just to summarize there are two major methods of determining moment of a force one is the vector method the second is the scalar method which i described in this video and for a beginner it would be advisable to follow the third method the geometric method and then upgrade to the scalar method i hope you found this useful and in case you have any question please leave them in the comment section below and i'll respond to them as early as possible thanks for watching and if you have liked the video please give your thumbs up and share and if you are new to the channel please subscribe thank you very much and see you again in the next video